started uh, factoring when we learned how to take the greatest common factor of a polynomial. Uh, today, we are going to factor trinomials. Specifically, we are factoring trinomials of this form x squared plus bx plus c, where b and c will be numbers. Now I'd like you to write down uh, the steps to doing this. First things first, you're going to list factors of c, meaning the number that will be in c's place. You're going to list everything that multiplies to c. Then you're going to select select the pair that adds to B. To check, you're going to do something called check smiles, which I will talk to you about in a moment. So it will all become clear once we take a look at an, at an example. We're going to follow my steps every time. As you get better at this, you won't always have to list all the factors, and you'll, you'll develop more efficient ways of doing it. All right, so number one, uh, who can list to me all the factor pairs of 32? Uh, Kevin? Uh, 16 and 2. 16 and 2? Uh, 4 and 8. Good. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So now when we factor a trinomial, it is always the product of two binomials. So go ahead and write <laughs> two sets of parentheses. Now when you multiply two binomials together, what times what makes x squared? Yes. X. x. So when you multiply first term times first term, you get that x squared term. Okay? We're basically doing the reverse of FOIL. Okay? Now, when we multiply last term times last term, that's how we get 32. So now we have a choice. We can either use 16 and 2 or we can use 8 and 4. Which one should we use? Evan? 8 and 4. Why? Because 8 and 4 out of 4. Perfect. Now, everything's positive, so I'm going to say plus 4 and plus 8. So, so far, we've listed the factors of C. We selected the pair that adds to B. The last thing I would like you to do is to do something called check your smiles. The smiles are when you multiply the inner terms and you get 4x, and you multiply the outer terms and you get 8x, and you check that it adds to 12x. Now, we already knew that it was going to add to 12x because we selected the correct pair. However, doing the smile check is, is going to be imperative when we get into uh, tomorrow's lesson. Go ahead now and let's go on to number two. The other way to check it is to refoil it. If you refoil it completely, you can get x squared plus 12x plus 32. The quick way to check it is to check the smiles. All right, uh, Chanel, will you list for me the factors of 6? 2 and 3. And? 6 and 1. Six and one. Yes, don't forget the number and, and 1. Write your two sets of parentheses. Michaela, what multiplies uh, to get x squared? X and x. x and x. You can kind of see the trend here. And Katie, which pair do you think we should select? 6 and 1. Perfect. And when you check the smiles, that's 6x. That's 1x, 1 and 6 is 7. That's the answer. Now one tendency my students have had in the past is once they've factored it, they re-foil uh, it and write it in standard form. We don't want that. The directions say to factor, so you should write the factors out. Okay? Don't, you shouldn't re-express your answer how the problem was. Michaela? Uh, you're going to need to show that definitely for tomorrow's lesson, so I would build the, ha the habit today. Okay. All right, so now uh, go ahead and list the factors of 60. Let's see. Let's see, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, 
6 and 10. Are there any others? No. All right. That was a lot. Now, if you recognize the pair that works before you've listed all of them, then you don't need to write all of them out. I'm always going to write all of them out because I, I want to make sure everybody can see it. Uh, Ty, what should I put uh, in my first term in each, bi uh, each binomial? So H and H, and then what? which pair is it? 10 and 6. Now, I have H plus 10 times H plus 6. If you had H plus 6 times H plus 10, it's still the same, okay? Fact, you can multiply uh, and move your factors around, right? Multiplication is commutative. All right, so 10H and 6H, yep, that adds to 16H. All right, let's keep going. Now, in number 4, we have the issue of the product being positive but the sum being negative. So when you're listing your factors, go ahead and put your x and x, when you're listing your factors, you should list what type of factors? Negative, because only those would multiply to positive and add to negative. Uh, who thinks they know which one it is? Uh, Evan. Let's see, we know negative six. Negative Good, negative 16 and negative 2. When you multiply here, you get negative 16x, negative 2x, that adds to negative 18x. Okay, in number 5, we have um, two variables. Well, A and A stays, right? Oh, we're lucky, 11's prime, so we know it has to be 11 and 1. If it's not, then it wouldn't factor. But our middle term has to be po has to be negative. So what should I make each of my second terms? Negative. I should make each of them negative, and then how am I going to get it to be b squared? Who can tell me? Uh, Coleman. I'm putting, uh, by having each one be a b. So make this one 11b and make this one be 1b or just b. Good. So then when you check your smiles, that's negative 11ab. This is minus 1ab, which adds to minus 12ab. And if you like, go ahead and make your smiley face complete with some eyes. If you want to add a top hat, you can too. It's just, just fun. Got to have fun in math. All right, go ahead, and I'll give you the y and, and the y. But go ahead and, keep and, and factor this one. And when you have the answer, raise your hand. Factors of 20 that add to 9. All right, Kiani, what do you have? Negative 4x and negative 5x. Good. So we have the x and the x to make the x squared, right? And negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20 and adds to negative 9. Check our smiles, and it works out. Any questions on number 6? All right, let's move, move it along. Now, these next examples, we have a mixture. We have the last term being negative, and sometimes the middle term is negative, and sometimes it's positive. Go ahead and commit to your parentheses, and your x, and your x. Luckily, we're using a lot of 32s. So now watch out what combinations I have to list. I have to think about uh, 8 and negative 4. I have to think about negative 8 and positive 4. I have to think about 16 and negative 2 and negative 16 and positive 2. Do you have to list that out every time? You do until you get good at it. All right, which of those pairs is going to add to positive 4? Chanel. Negative 4 and 8, and positive 8. Good. And if you had the first, fact, the first pair as plus 8 and the second uh, one as minus 4, it doesn't matter. Check your smiles. You get negative 4. That's positive 8. When you subtract, you get positive 4 as your difference. Good. Now, notice I didn't write down 32 and 1. I didn't write down 32 and 1 because look at 4. It's, a, it's, a, you know, it's relatively small. 32 and 1 is going gonna, is gonna to get you either... Uh, either 31 if they're both, uh, if one of them's negative, one of them's positive, or it's going to get you 33 if they're both 
uh, positive or both negative. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, I don't need to relist my factor pairs because I've already done it. Will, which, which pair will add to negative 4? Um, negative 8 and 4. And positive 4. Perfect. <coughs> and here we need to do two things. First off, I have to take my x and my x. And we're going to have a y and a y, right? Now, uh, Ingrid, which factors of 32 are going to add to negative 31? Um. I didn't list them over here. Maybe I'll add the other set. It's either negative 32 and positive 1 or positive 32 and negative 1. All right, good. So make this one positive 32 and this one negative 1 or just negative y. And check your smiles. That's 32xy minus 1xy. Ooh, wait, that's not right. Yeah, it's negative 32. This needs to be positive. Negative. Didn't you say that and I just didn't hear you right? Yeah. Yes. All right, let's get rid of that. <laughs> All right, so minus 32 and plus. That's how we, uh, that's the right answer. Good thing I checked my smiles. All right, so now notice the directions change. We have the word solve. We have equal signs, and we have zeros. So to solve a trinomial, you have to have everything on one side equal to zero. Everything, you're writing this down, please, on one side equal to zero. And then you must factor. If you made the mistake on your quiz yesterday of trying to solve those two problems without factoring first, or in that case without taking the greatest common factor first, you can't do it. Because the zero product property says that when things are being multiplied, one of the factors must be zero. It doesn't say anything about addition or subtraction. All right, so let's go ahead and write this trinomial as a product. We're going to unfoil it. Going to keep my equals to zero. Think factors of positive 12 that add up to negative 7. Uh, Tate, what do you get? Negative 3 and negative 4. Now we have to do zero product property, right? So take each of the factors and set them equal to 0. And Kevin, what are your two answers? x equals 3 and x equals 4. Nice. All right, let's do 11. Same deal. Already everything is on one side equal to 0, so we're good. Commit to your x times x. Now think factors of 72. I'm not, I haven't listed them, but I already have hands up, so this is great. Chanel, what do you think? 8 times 9 is 72, and 8 plus 9 is 17. Good. Now set each factor equal to zero. And Coleman, what's my answer? Good. Questions so far? So on number 12, it changes just a bit. I don't have everything on one side. Um, who want, how, we want to vote here. Which side should we move it to? Should I move everything to the left-hand side or move everything to the right-hand side? Why to the right? Yeah, let's keep the x squared positive, right? So I'm going to say that this is 0 equals positive x squared, and I'm just going to write the opposite, plus 7x minus 18. It doesn't bother me that the 0 is over here. Go ahead and take your two factors. We know that x times x makes x squared. We've listed the factors of negative 18 a couple times today already, or of 18 at least. Which of those is going to add up to a positive 7? Ingrid, what do you think? Factors of 18 that add to 7. Um, See, is it 1 and 18? Negative 1 and 18. No, that oh, wouldn't add up. Uh, All right, so oh, oh, wait. Yeah. is it 6 and 3? No, so 9 and 2? Um, well, 9 oh. and negative 2. 9 and negative 2. Well, we need one of them to be negative. So let's go ahead and make this plus 9 minus 2. All right. 
Now use the zero product property. X plus 9 is 0. X plus 2 is 0. Uh, Griff, what are my two answers? X is equal to negative 9 and X is equal to 2. 2, good. I'm running out of room. The factors are plus 9 and negative 2, and so when you, you uh, uh, solve, you get the solutions to be negative 9 and 2. All right. Ty, go ahead and walk me through number 13. Good. Well, let's go ahead and make it in standard form, so make the minus 6x. Good. All right, next, next step. We're factoring x times x. Good. Factors of 8 that add to negative 6. Positive 8, negative 6. Perfect. They both have to be negative for that to work. You can kind of check your smiles in your head. Set each factor equal to 0. And so, uh, Sophia, what's my two answers? Perfect. Nice job. All right, so now number 14, once again, we need to get everything on one side. I'm going to subtract the 40x. Oh, my goodness, factors of 400. 400 is a perfect square. So in my mind, I have, I have the perfect one in my head. Oh. 20 and 20. Don't, don't make a factor list if you recognize a perfect square, all right? Because odds are, if it's a perfect square, you're going to use that, okay? So x and x. Now, should they be positive 20 and positive 20 or minus 20 and minus 20? Minus and minus. What's happening? If, as I set each of them equal to 0, am I going to get two different answers? No, I got x equals 20 here, and I'm going to get x equals 20 here. This, has, this is a special solution. We call this a double, write this down, a double root, x equals 20. And when we start graphing quadratics, you're going to see that if you were to graph this, if you had the equation y equals x squared minus 40x plus 400, that it would only touch the x-axis once. There would only be one solution. And we'll talk about that more once we start graphing. All right, on 15, we need to put it into standard form. So let's go for it. Put it into standard form and factor x squared, let's see, I'm going to combine like terms first, get everything on one side, Kiani, what do I get? Minus 63 is 0, go ahead and finish it up. Perfect, x plus 3, x minus 21. All right, turn it over, and for the rest of class, I'd like you to go ahead and finish the, uh, these up. We have the answers there for you. Um, notice that when it says x-intercepts, that means you're going to need to factor it and set each equal to zero. Same thing on 17 when it says what are the zeros of the function. It's still solving. All right, good work.